We are here at Marina Bay, just uh, south of Boston. Whoa, she's a beauty. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I'm so in love with this. This is terrific. This is tough to beat. This is the best. Hi there, this is Captain Q. Join us as we travel hither and yon to show you some great deals on some really interesting boats and maybe learn just a little bit with each one. Hey Randy, good to see you again. How you been? Really good. Well listen, I'm glad you came down. I, we are here at Marina Bay uh, in North Quincy, Massachusetts, just uh, south of Boston. What we're gonna look at today is a boat really essentially designed to cruise, but cruise fast and be safe. And this is gonna be definitely be an offshore uh, blue water boat. I look for boats that appear to be underpriced. This boat was originally on the market for uh, about $75,000, and she shows now at 39,900. She was designed by Henry Vauquier and built in France in 1976. She's 43 feet long, almost 34 feet on the waterline. Waterline length, of course, is what determines the speed of the boat. I've seen uh, videos of sister ships under sail, and I like the way she appears to move through the water. Her cut water bow is slightly concave, and it looks like it's gonna give the boat a dry motion in the seaway. A lot of midship cockpit boats like this uh, often have very wet co cockpits and very hard to keep them dry. And I think this boat is going to do a nice job of, of keeping you comfortable. Today, I want to focus a little bit more on the ergonomics of the boat that we're looking at. Randy and I are going to look at this Wauquia Amphitrite for the first time. I've never seen one close. I'm really looking forward to it. Dark blue hull, catch rig. Whoa, she's a beauty. She's a beauty. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Get out the checkbook. 43 feet. She's 13 feet on the beam. She has about a 35% ballast displacement ratio, which is gonna give her uh, reasonable stability, but she's not over canvas with about 700 and 50 square feet of sail. That combined with her beam, she should be a nice sea boat. Should be very comfortable offshore. Nice big flush decks. Now these decks on this particular boat originally came with teak and they were all hand laid teak from one end to the other. And what they've done here is what was suggested need be done with the uh, FNC 44. Yep. And that's to strip the teak uh, off and put down a non-skid surface. That's what they've done. That's a really pretty good surface. What I'm seeing right now, one of the things that I really love is the cockpit. Look how deep that cockpit is. It must be 20 inches deep. This boat would have to almost fall over for you to fall out of it. But she's been sitting here and cooking a little bit and uh, the varnish is just boiling off the teak. This is not a problem whatsoever. Teak doesn't like varnish particularly. Uh, it'll accept it, but you have to keep coats of it on there. Oh, ideally, six or seven coats would be the best. I think that's about what Hinkley does, maybe even eight yeah. coats. I like what I'm seeing a lot. On the spar, it's a good, solid aluminum spar. Good standard stuff that was good back in the late 70s. And the hull rounds out with a little bit of tumble home, nothing like the F and C, but just enough to give it that added buoyancy. And forward here, She's nice and flat, uh, and she looks like she's got some depth down below, so you're going to uh, settle into the waves nicely without pounding. That's ergonomic problem number one with this particular boat. I don't know if there'll be more, but I tell you right now, if you don't have a gate, a split in the railing, it's very hard to hoist yourself up off the dock about three feet. But fortunately, my cameraman is <laughs> very strong and was able to hoist uh, the old captain here over the lifeline. But I'm standing on the fantail right now, the after deck, which has got a ballroom amount of room. We've got storage lockers back here. Wow, this is so great. This is a huge ergonomic plus because you can put all the stuff you've ever wanted. This is a real climb in, climb out storage locker. That's terrific. Right next to it is a uh, hatch. The sheets on the mizzen are like new. The halyards are 
in great shape and new halyards here. The sails have lazy jacks and that's these lines right here which come down from about halfway up the spar and what happens when you're ready to drop the sail you point the bo boat into the wind and you just let the halyard fly and the whole sail will fall down into this canvas blue bag arrangement. They call it a, a Mac pack from Mac sails. This is kind of the new trend. Uh, this would be a step slightly below having the sail go into the spar where you roll up the sail in the, in the mast itself. This big canister right here uh, looks like a six man, possibly an eight man life raft. You yank on a cord usually and it pops open and you'll get a nice big hooded life raft. I'm so in love with this. This is terrific. I'm sitting down in this cockpit right now. This is tough to beat. This is the best. The box down here at the bottom is part of the autopilot system. A lot of autopilots have a direct arm that, that pushes back and forth on the shaft for the rudder. In this particular case, this, this piece down here is reading the course and then making adjustments on this belt drive that you see. The belt drive is attached to the wheel and it actually turns this wheel to, to steer the boat when you're under sail or under power. All the engine controls are right here encased in plastic, and that's pretty terrific. Uh, they've also put a couple of a locker here for the propane, and propane has to be vented overboard, so there's probably a vent down here. Uh, going forward, I'd like to see this, this box sealed, maybe. Is this the biggest cockpit you've seen? Oh, and, and it, it's almost incomparable. I mean, it's, it's, really, it's really a fabulous cockpit, and no better place to sleep on a warm evening than in the cockpit. Wow, yeah, oh my gosh. I can't believe the amount of room down in here. And just notice by the two steps getting down there that uh, uh, that'll give you an idea how deep this is because you need two steps to get just to the floor of this thing. One thing I notice here is the antenna for a Garmin, which is sort of a weird place to put it. It looks very vulnerable to me. I don't understand why they did that. I might call that a small ergonomic boo-boo. Now here's one of the other things ergonomically that I love is the uh, scuppers. Scupper area is the area that runs along the rail of the deck. If this boat's heeling over and you're trying to do some work up here, you've got a good place to brace. Nice big chain locker, rope chain locker, and combination for chain to go all the way down into the build. All right, well, Randy. We've got to go below right now, but I hate to leave this cockpit. It's really just the best thing I've seen in a boat in a long time. It's really terrific. So let's head below. In the galley area, I'm in here and I feel like I'm in one of the safest places in the world right here. A two burner stove, uh, propane stove with oven and uh, tons of storage. That's huge. This is unbelievable. I'm going to take my hat off in reverence. This is called a Valiant uh, Geyser uh, hot water heater. And I had one of my own boat, a similar one. It's instant hot water and it runs on propane. They work great for 18 years for me. Flawless. Nothing goes wrong. And here, oh my God, we need some steps in here like the lockers <laughs> in the sail area. Huge depth in there. I don't know how many square feet there are, but there's more than enough uh, in the refrigerator. And here's a freezer side to it on the other side. Take or give orders to the crew. <laughs> what do you want on your sandwich? Yeah, it's a drive-through. Like it's it. sort of like a drive-through. Very, very popular today with with COVID. Seeing so you don't need a mask. There are double double uh, sinks in the galley, and that's very helpful because. You always kind of have a soapy one, and you've got to have a, a rinse uh, sink, which makes it very easy to uh, clean up after meals. Wow, this is a, a wonderful galley on this boat. Really belongs on a 50-footer almost. This is a mind-boggler right here. This is for any, anybody that's gone to sea or ever navigated, uh, had to be a navigator on a boat. This is the best. Um, the size of this chart table is bigger than anything I've ever seen. It must be, what is that, three, four, almost four feet yeah. wide. 
The radar is right here. This is an old Furuno style. A little VHF kind of floating free for some reason. The circuit panels over here, it's just all very handy. And I'm very comfortable. And we've got a little light here, so we can open up some light into the, into the area. Uh, but this is just wonderful. A little tricky here, this part. Uh, the floor drops down. Ergonomically, uh, this will not please a lot of people because I'm basically bent over here, but it's easy enough to get into the bunk. I'm very comfortable. I'll sail all night like this. There's a little light there for ventilation and light. Into the uh, master cabin. This is a little different arrangement. Anybody want to remember where that door goes? <laughs> that goes to the aft locker. Right? Oh, you get the prize. There it is. Yeah. So, two things about this. One, there's no direct access to the deck normally here. But if you felt the need or compunction to get out of the boat quickly, you've got a giant, huge manway hatch here that'll take two of me going through that at the same time. Plus, there's another hatch you could go right up right there through the uh, fantail deck there. I like that. Nice big queen berth a window in the transom there. When that curtain is out of there, you'll have a great view. A stern plus more light in the bunk, so this will feel great. A nice little private office space here. Again, with lots of light. These curtains are a little dingy right now, but look at the light coming in here. And when you open that hatch, it's going to be like sitting outdoors. It's fabulous. So we have lots of light, lots of air. Shoe storage. Don't think much about that, but there's your shoe storage. They've utilized every little space they could. Uh, this is access to the bilge. There's a tiny drab of water down. I don't know what that is. Uh, and there's a, an exhaust vent here for something. I have a feeling there might have been a uh, hot air heater on board the boat. That, that bump in the bottom of the locker there, that's called a stringer. And those run the full length of the hull. And they're molded over uh, different things, sometimes wood, sometimes foam. It's fiberglass molded over, and it creates a, uh, an I-beam effect, if you will, for strengthening the whole hull. This is a very, very strong hull. On the other side, is the head. Now this is pretty remarkable. This is a handheld shower and it drains down here to the floorboards. All of it, this boat again remember is 44 years old and it's just not showing wear uh, or tear on the boat. She's really in marvelous condition. Oh, <laughs> no blood there. You know, the engine room here, it looks pretty much certain it's an original engine. Transmission, and the butt end here looks a little rusty but if I were to buy this boat, I would certainly have a mechanic come down and, and, and check it over completely and make certain all the lines are tight uh, and that there's no leakage. Clean filters for the fuel. Uh, here's an oil sump uh, pump out, which is very nice. And you've got to change the oil. You just push up and down that handle a few times and get the oil out of the sump. They're often very difficult to get to. It's a nice, uh, easy space, relatively speaking, to work. There are very few engine rooms that you really fall in love with, but this is not bad. I would give this a, a good um, 7.5 out of 10 for the ergonomics, but I'd be willing to bet it would probably light right off and uh, run like a champ. All right, we've left the master cabin aft, gone past the nav station, and um, the amount of room in here is just mind-boggling. This will slide out and give you a double right here. So you've got a great big double berth right here in the main cabin. On the other side, I think that's a fixed berth down there. And then there's a settee berth and then the pilot above it, uh, which are great places to sleep at offshore. Covered areas here on either side, covered chain plates that come down and they're right in line with the mast, as you see. And uh, that's the whole structure of the boat right here in this area. You can see the shroud boxes right there, one on each side. Into the forward cabin, Oh my gosh, look at what's here. Look at the storage in here, all across the forward bulkhead. Built-in storage, up high and dry. Little lockers over each berth. The cushions are all, they look like they were just done this year. Beautiful, nice uh, canvas with red welding on it. And a nice size forward head. Yeah, king size. It's almost identical, actually. And 
Lots of privacy. Wonderful forward head. Again, far better than most you find on other boats. Uh... Wow, that was a really interesting boat and certainly different looking than a lot of boats you see on the market today. Fascinating boat, I liked it a lot. Uh, I guess I should say at this point, <laughs> many of our viewers will notice that I like a lot of these boats a lot. I like this boat. Uh, her looks uh, are really interesting. She looks lovely under sail. It's just a, it's a, a pretty boat, but not in the classic ways. Uh, but it's a very user-friendly boat, I'd like to think of in this particular boat. There's a lot of flush deck. There is the world's second biggest uh, cockpit that's not only big, but it's also very deep and very safe. I like that in a boat for young children, uh, old people sailing at night. The safety of that cockpit is everything to me. The interior in this particular boat is in great shape and the uh, layout uh, was very interesting. Uh, the aft cabin was way aft and a little tricky to get to and something you'd have to learn to live with. It's a boat ready to go to sea. This particular boat may already be sold and I, I'm not surprised because it really is a joy to behold. I'm sorry, this boat at the price she's being offered at $39,000 is just nuts. You can put this boat over the side, polish it up a little bit, put on the sails, and you can go to the Caribbean. You can go to Fiji. There's a sister ship tour sailed around the world almost four times, and it's owned by a man named Fatty Goodlander. And Fatty writes a number of, of, of books and articles, and he will tell you how to sail one of these if you decide to buy your own. Rating-wise, we're going to give this a, a 10.2 because uh, it's perfect, but it doesn't quite have the curb appeal. The companionway from the main cabin back to the after cabin, the after stateroom. Some people might consider that slightly claustrophobic. I'd like to hear from you what you think about that, if that would be a, a deal breaker of some sort for you or for your partner, or if you would be happy owning this boat for 39,000. Let me know what you think We're back in the boatyard again. We're down in beautiful Ipswich, Massachusetts. Very pretty lines. So she's really quite lovely, quite remarkable. The asking price now is just under $20,000, which is incredible. It's just, just an amazing price.